Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Today we are going to clean out the chicken coop and I have to say it gets pretty gruesome. There is a lot of chicken poo involved. So if you are squeamish, turn off now. So before we start, I'll actually show you the chicken coop. Um, so we haven't done the mats or anything this morning, so we'll go through the whole process of what we do. We don't do this every single day. Um, we try to clean the chicken mats every day, but to be honest, we don't get around to it every single day, every single week. Um, so we might do it every day, three days a week, and then every couple of days for the rest of the week, depending on how busy we are. But I'll show you a dirty chicken coop to start with, and then you can see the before and after. So this is the main coop. We've got two coops. We've got this one, which is our main egg laying coop. And then we have this small one, um, which is where we have our breeding bantam chickens. So in here, you can see that we've got the nesting boxes and there's a heap of eggs in there. You can see that the nesting boxes are a little bit grubby, so we'll clean those up. And the roof is a little bit dusty. And then in here, somebody's missed the nesting box. We will clean up in here. And the reason we want to clean up in that little back area is that is the nursery for the baby Keats. So when the guinea fowl start to lay their eggs and the chickens come and brood on them and we hatch out a heap of guinea fowl, they stay in that area. Now the guinea fowl haven't laid eggs for a long time, but I know they're starting to get um, broody um, and they will lay the eggs really soon. They won't sit on them because guinea fowl are terrible mothers, but the chickens will sit on them. So we'll clean that up so that it's nice and clean and fresh. Um, for when the guineas start laying eggs. So over here, you can see that we have the stands that the chickens roost on at night. And you can see, this is a couple of days of chicken poo. Gross. It doesn't smell too bad. So we'll show you how we take the mats out and clean them and dry them and bring them back in. And the other thing that we need to do is the nesting hay in the boxes is getting pretty low. Um, we had an egg break yesterday because there wasn't enough nesting material. So I'm going to show you the really cool thing that we do to supply our own nesting box hay. Or it's not really hay, but we'll show you. So you can see here, these are really low. So we'll top those up and we will also top up the feeder which will run out in the next day or so and we will clean up the water and we will also put some things on the ground that we will explain to you about and why we do it but first Tim is going to bring in um, some of the materials that we use so here comes Tim there's a broody arancana that we've put in the vegetable garden so she cools down and stops brooding. And Tim is bringing in the wheelbarrow. And this is some of the things we need. You are, you are very noisy. Okay, so he's got some chicken food. We used to keep all of the chicken food and all of the shell grit and all of the diatomaceous earth, everything that we needed for the chickens, we used to keep in the chicken coop. But what happened was the cockatoos came in by the hundreds um, and they started off just eating the food that we had put out for the chickens. But after a while, they started to chew the containers to pieces in order to get through to the sunflower seeds or the chicken food. So we've actually moved all of the food up onto the veranda. So each morning we now come out with a bucket, collect the food that we want to give to them and come down and give it to them in the coop. And that has completely gotten rid of the cockatoo problem. 99.9% .9 gotten rid of the cockatoo problem. So Tim's got the wheelbarrow here and we've got some chicken food and some shell grit and some beautiful chopped up lemongrass and I'll show you how we use that. heap of 
coconut palms growing in here. If you ever thought you would get guinea fowl, I'm sure you've just changed your mind. But they are absolutely fantastic. They are cute, they are hilarious, they get rid of snakes, they tell you if there's a dog around or a postman or a delivery guy. Unbelievable, really, really cool animals or birds. So these are the things that we use. So this is organic diatomaceous earth, and I'll show you that when we open it. The chicken crumble like I showed you before. And this is shell grit. So to buy the diatomaceous earth and the grit in the really large bags, so they're 20 kilo bags, it costs us about $100 a year. But it is so good. So the diatomaceous earth is made up from some sort of ground up insect casings, I don't know. Um, and what that does, and we've had really good success with it, is it stops your chickens from getting any parasites like worms or lice or anything like that. So we actually use some of that on the floor in the chicken coop and we will top that up, put just a couple of cups uh, uh, every few months, like literally like hardly any at all. And the other place that we put it, outside the coop here, these are their dust baths that they've naturally dug. So we will put a little bit of diatomaceous earth in here so that as they are dust bathing, the diatomaceous earth is getting right into their feathers um, and that I believe stops them from getting any fleas or lice or anything like that. So the reason that we use shell grit is that a chicken doesn't have teeth, obviously, it only has a beak. So when it eats all of its grains and its food and its leaves and its grass that it picks up around the place, everything goes into its crop and in there it has to be ground up. So all the little stones and sharp bits of sand and everything, or grit, all move around with the muscles of the, the crop and it um, breaks down the food. If they don't have enough and it doesn't break down properly, they can get blockages um, and they can get sour crop or a lot of other, you know, sort of, you know, bad things that happen to chickens. So it's a really good idea to make sure that they have a heap of shell grit around. We can't be bothered doing it all the time. So we will put a heap in and level the whole bottom of the chicken coop with grit um, and that will last them the year. And the other thing that grit does is it contains calcium. So that really helps um, to make sure that their eggs become the eggshells become nice and strong. We will also give them crushed up eggshells from their own eggs, um, but the shell grit um, is already there to be um, a grit in their crop. So they also get the calcium out of it. So Tim is now going to clean out the chicken poo from the shelves and this is a pretty gross procedure but you actually get used to it. Once you're used to it it's absolutely fine I swear. So we've got a bucket and we've got an old paint scraper. Good luck. So I'll just show you here this is all the chicken poo on the shelf and Tim will scrape it off easy and the reason that we scrape the chicken poo off is because we want to harvest it so we wash most of the poo that's left on the mats after it's been harvested on the grass and that will run down onto the fruit trees so that's okay but the stuff that Tim is scraping off now and putting into the bucket is what we will add to the liquid compost um, and that will really help to make our compost really, really nutrient rich um, with all the goodness that chicken poo has to offer. So you can see how much is left on there now. We'll just hose that off at the end. And you can see how much we've got in the bucket there. And that will go into the liquid compost in the shed. And that's just from two mats so far. So that will go into the IBC container with all the liquid compost. And this definitely does smell, but it really doesn't smell as much as what you would think it would.
I never thought we'd be making a video about chicken food, but it's got to be done. Hello, Coco. Are you going to lay an egg? Are you going to lay an egg? Good on you. I need to make a tie omelet. Thank you very much. So you can see there's some bigger and smaller eggs there depending on who's laid them. And there's some in there. And some in there. And then also there's a few down here. And because the guinea fowl are about to start laying eggs, I need to check that the ones in there are chicken eggs and not guinea fowl eggs. So that we can leave the guinea fowl eggs in there um, to hatch. And also I don't really want to eat guinea fowl eggs um, because they're not as appetizing as chicken eggs and I've never eaten one, but I don't like the smell of them as much. Um, but they are great for breeding guinea fowl um, if you want to sell some guinea keats on the side. And you can see he's putting the mats front to front um, so that we don't get any chicken poo on the backs and that just makes it easier to keep clean. Now you'll notice there's a few white feathers around here. So on the ground and around the, the wire, you can see there's some white feathers. And I'll show you why. This is mango. And you can see how disheveled mango looks. And that is because she is molting. So she is losing a whole lot of feathers, which happens to all the chickens. Um, and then they get a nice, fresh new coat. So it can happen at any time of year. Um, you always think, oh, what's happening? And then you realize that they're molting. So Tim is laying down the scraped off mats and he will get the hose and he will actually just wet them first and let them soak while he's doing something else because it's just more time effective to let them soak, go and do what else you've got to do and then come and hose them off at the end and hang them up. the chicken's roosting wood, not your sticks. Lexi, this is for the chickens. Lexi says, sorry, not sorry. So this is a whole bunch of old branches and tree trunks that Tim has just piled up. And especially when it's wet or when it's sunny, the chickens all jump up on here to get off of the ground and to get a heap of sun and it looks really cute when they're up there. And in the meantime, they'll dig under here and get out all the bugs. Won't you, Peppa? Yes? You can see we've got the papaya growing in the large run here and we've got some mango trees heap of little ones. We've got a couple of durian trees which are actually surviving so I'm so happy about that. And we've got some coconuts which are getting nice and big. So the mats that we are using on the cheap metal shelves in the in the chicken coop are actually the barbecue mats. So they're mats that go under a barbecue um, that you can get from the hardware store. And then we just cut them up into the size of the shelf. Um, and that way we can get all of the chicken poo out of the coop. Um, there's lots of different methods of doing this. Like you can have a deep litter method where you don't clean out the chicken poo and you just add heaps of um, carbon material on top of it as the year goes by and then just empty it out once a year. For us, um, this is the best way. 
and um, we have the sand base with a heap of grit in it so it's a mix of sand and grit and then we add some diatomaceous earth to that then we have our plastic mats on the shelves so we can get most of the poo out of the coop each day um, just to reduce the risk of parasites or smell or anything else gross that happens with chicken poo. The other thing it does is when the, if there's lots of chicken poo in your coop, when the chickens go in to lay, they walk in and they stand in it and then they jump up into the nesting box and they bring the chicken poo into the nesting box so you can get a bit of poo on the eggs, which is not the end of the world. They're chickens, that's what happens. Um, but if you can keep it cleaner, you end up with really nice clean eggs. Do you guys realize I'm trying to make a video and you are very noisy? People won't even want chickens after seeing how loud you guys are. You can see over here, this is just a bit of leftover papaya that they've found. And they will demolish that. I'll only say it once. The reason we have super eggs is papaya and sweet potato leaves and banana leaves and all the good stuff that we grow on this property that the chickens just love to eat. What's your problem? Hey, what's your problem? Okay guys, we need to be on our best behaviour so that people don't get scared of chickens. Hello molting mango. You look terrible. You look terrible. I saw your feathers everywhere under the banana trees. So we've still got a couple of mats to go but that's how much chicken poo we've got. And that will all go into the IBC yep. for some fantastic liquid compost. Yeah. So now Tim's just going to go in and clean the, or grab the mats in where the bantams are. Excuse me. Thank you. Good girl. One of the wild guineas has somehow gotten himself caught or herself caught in there. Don't know why. There's an Arancana chicken in the vegetable garden. She's one of three brooding hens at the moment. So a brooding hen is when a hen wants to hatch some eggs. Now those eggs may be fertile or may not be fertile. And with us in that run, they are not fertile. But they will sit on those eggs for like 30 days or sit on different eggs every day for 30 days trying to hatch them. Um, so we usually leave them go for a while, but she's been in there for a very long time. And we've got now three brooding hens, which means three hens that are not laying eggs. So we've chucked them all in the veggie garden. If we put them in there for three days, um, they will stop being broody. One of them we're actually going to keep broody so that she can sit on the guinea fowl eggs if they lay some eggs um, and hatch and look after the babies because she's a really good mother, that's sweet leaf. Hello, Nussie Lamac. What are you doing? So this is the bantam poop and Tim's just scraping off the chicken poo from these mats and I'll show you. So we have two different sorts of bantams in here. One lays an egg this big and one lays an egg that big. <laughs> so Dumpling is a bantam and she's a duckwing leghorn. Hello Dumpling. And she lays a really good size egg, like that is big enough to eat um, in your bacon and egg sandwich. Dumpling, you're really good. You lay good eggs. And then, this is a sunbathing pit game bantam, if you can see just over here. That's Kaya Toast. And she lays an egg this big. So I'm going to put them back in there um, because they are fertilized because we have a rooster. We have two roosters. And if you've got a rooster and you are worried that your eggs aren't fertile, do not be worried. If you have a rooster near your hens, your eggs are fertile. So as soon as one of them gets to know how to brood, we will have some little chicks. I'm going to pop the little one back in this side. And then I'm going to pop the bigger one from Dumpling in with her other ones. And then Tim's going to take their mats out. Mm. 
ye old bucket of goodness. Or ye old bucket of grossness, whichever way you want to put it. So once a chicken starts brooding, they are desperate to brood because in their mind, if they're not brooding, their chicks are dying. Even though these chickens' eggs are not fertilized, so there are no chicks, but I'll show you how desperate um, the black arancana is to get back to the nesting box and brood because we took her off. You can see how she's desperately trying to get through the fence. And we had to cut their wings because they were flying over the fence and getting back into the nesting box. You can't come in here. There's no chicks to brood. So the instinct to brood is just so powerful. And when they're brooding, their body heats up in temperature. They lose the feathers off the front of their belly most of the time. So that where the eggs make contact with the chicken is really, really hot. So that's why it takes three days to stop um, the chickens from brooding because you actually have to allow their body temperature, which is what makes them want to brood. Um, you have to get that to really drop so that they don't have the urge to sit on the eggs anymore. Are you king of the world? No? Look at you, you're very impressive. Let's go and say hello to Rotty the rooster. He's so beautiful. Hello, Rotty. Hello, Rotty. What you doing? You having a nice day? You enjoying the sunshine? You're so pretty, or so handsome. So Tim has washed all the mats. And now he's going to hang them up on the fence to dry. So we actually used to hang them over the fence with the chicken poo on them and hose them over here. But the smell was too bad because all the chicken poo would just end up on the ground. And this way it's sort of further down on the grass and it's going to wash down into the fruit trees and then there's also a lot less chicken poo because we are harvesting it for the liquid compost. And there's another thing because the mats are black and it's so hot up here. The mats get really, really hot in the sun. And I think that helps to kill all the bacteria and helps to keep the smell down as well. So next, Tim is going to rake up the bottom of the coop um, and get a few of the bits of chicken poo off the shelves and everything and um, get that right out of the coop before we do the ground. We've got a couple of different sorts of rakes that we use. That's just, they're both very cheap. So that's the big, um, plastic sort and then we all ha also have one of these very cheap ones that is rusty um, if we need a smaller rake to get into smaller areas which we do you can see how there's these holes in the ground here this is where the chickens have dug it all out so that they can dust bathe hello what's the problem Moringa so Tim will get that nice and clean and get up all the poo and all the excess food and feathers before we put the new base of grit down. Talking of Moringa, so Moringa is named, most of the chickens are named after something that we grow, most of them. Um, Moringa is named after Moringa trees, which we have a few of. And I'll just show you here. This is what the cockatoos did to our beautiful big Moringa tree and they chewed it off completely and destroyed it. But because I know that Moringa trees can actually handle a really good cutback, um, I just left it. I was very upset, but I just left it. And now look at this. The Moringa tree is starting to get some brand new shoots. Well, that one looks like it's had a, a bit of a bad time, but you can see here. So I have no doubt that this Moringa tree will grow back. We do have some more really big ones as well um, because we love Moringa. Um, but yeah, 
So the cockatoos tried to destroy it and failed. See, so you can see now Tim has got the smaller rake, just so that he can get right into the corners. And it's also a really sharp wire one, so it gets up a lot of stuff. So now he's going to grab the very cheap dustpan. And I know I keep saying cheap, but I just want to show you that you don't have to pay a fortune for everything. Um, some things might be worth paying for, some things may not, it's up to you. But he's just using the little dustpan and we use the brush from the dustpan as well um, to clean things with. So that's a combination of chicken poop and food and feathers and hay or guinea grass. And where we put all the food is here. So I'll show you, we've got a number of these in the chicken run and these are called a salad bar. Now, Tim will just chuck that in there. So that's got a heap of nutrition in it for the, for the stuff to grow. So this is a salad bar. So it's, this is Malabar spinach, which grows really easily up here and the chickens eat it. And it's growing inside the wire frame. And that way the chickens can come up and eat the outside leaves as they come out of the wire, but they can't get into the middle and therefore they can't totally kill the plant, which they would if they could get into the roots. They would just eat the whole thing. So this way in the tropics, it grows quick enough that they can eat the outside leaves and then it just keeps growing and replenishing. And we have a few different salad bars all around the chicken run. So now we're going into the back part of the coop, which is the nursery. So you can see we've got this little fence. We don't have it closed in at the top. So the chicken that is the mother chicken can get in and out to feed and eat and do whatever she wants. But until the baby guineas are old enough to jump up here, um, they can't get out and it works really well. So Tim is gonna clean out in here and he'll just grab these eggs out. And I'm just looking at them as he does to make sure that none of them are giddy fowl eggs. And they're not. So they are all chicken eggs. And then as we're cleaning, any eggs we get, we'll just pop in the basket and take it into the kitchen as we leave. And there's one more egg, a green one. So Tim is just cleaning all the dirt around here so that it's nice and fresh for if the guinea fowl lay any keats. Now you'll notice that we have the nesting box in the middle with a massive gap at the back. And that is a lesson that we have learnt. So if you um, wedge the um, the nesting box up against the back wall there's still a bit of a gap because of the wire frame and you will get a python or a tree snake uh, waiting in there and you will lock the chickens up at night and then it will come out so we make sure that it's in the middle so that each night before we lock the chickens up we get the torch we check the cubby holes where the snakes would be no snakes lock them up all good and it works really well so feathers and straw guinea grass chicken poo so guinea grass is a native grass, I believe, um, and it grows everywhere along the sides of the road in far north Queensland. And we have some on our property, so we cut that and put that into the nesting boxes. We do that sometimes, but I'm also going to show you a really cool thing that we do today with lemongrass in the nesting boxes. Moringa. Moringa, what's your problem? What's your problem? So I'll just show you what we've got here. These are bowls, so clean bowls that are hanging on the fence. We've got some scissors so that we can cut up banana leaves or uh, sweet potato leaves or whatever. We can cut some soursop leaves from this tree, which the chickens love to eat. Do you mean star fruit? Yes, I do. So this is a huge star fruit tree and the chickens eat the star fruit leaves and the star fruit drop on the ground and they love to eat them. And then over here, we've got the cleaning stuff. So we've got the paint scraper, which we use to take the poo off the shelves. We've got the dustpan, which we use for everything. And the other thing that we have is the tongs. 
And the tongs are a pretty sad story because the tongs are used to pick up anything that is, so you might have a bird that's flown into a fence. Um, if there's anything else that is uh, not something that I want to pick up, I just use the tongs um, and I pick it up and throw it over into the bush usually. So next, Tim is going to get the chicken crumble. And this is a really good quality uh, chicken crumble that we use, which is a complete meal because that gives us peace of mind that even though we feed the chickens a heap of other things, that we know that if something happens, they've got everything that they need. And if you can't lift your chicken bucket, which I can't, I just use a scoop to do this. And that feeder will stay full for over a week. Um, and we know that they've always got food in there. If we're late to come out in the morning and give them some papaya or some greens or whatever, we know that they've got food. If it's before we get up and let them out in the morning or before the automatic chicken door opens, um, we know that they've got food in there as well. So next we're gonna put the grit on the ground. And I'll just say, there is a way that you can just pull a feed bag and it opens instantly and cleanly. And I've done it a couple of times and I can't do it again. So if you know how, let me know. But Tim is just going to cut. It's much easier. <laughs> cut the, the feed bag. And we never throw out the feed bags. They are so handy. We use them for everything. Even chicken art. Even chicken art, yeah. So this is what Tim means. So I've got an old chicken feed bags and made our chicken art so that the chickens feel really cultured and sophisticated in their coop. And then Tim is going to tip the grit into the main area here. He's gonna use three quarters of this bag in the main coop, in this coop. And you don't need to spread it because the chickens will spread it for you. And now we're going to put some in the bottom of the Bantam's coop, especially when they've started laying. We need to make sure that they've got heaps of calcium. What's your problem, roosters? What are they doing, Lexi? Are they talking to you? You can see where Lexi's hurt her head. So that big scratch. We were throwing her the ball and um, she ran into a star picket and cut across her head. It wasn't as bad as what it looks because it's just the hair that's gone. It didn't actually go into her skin, um, but she's not happy. And I think she's got a bit of a headache and she's feeling very sorry for herself. So the other good thing about using grit as a base for your chicken coop is that when it gets wet, it doesn't... Um, so if you have dirt, it sort of stays wet for a long time, whereas the grit is so porous and there's so much air in between that it actually dries out a lot quicker than normal dirt or sand. Next. So next, Tim is going to do the diatomaceous earth. So that's like a white chalky powder. Try not to breathe it in, um, so don't like chuck it everywhere. Just lightly sprinkle it on the ground. So basically it's such a really fine powder that any parasites or even insects, even spiders in the coop, it covers their whole body so that they can't breathe or excrete or do whatever it is that they normally do. And that's what kills them. So it actually sort of suffocates the parasites to death. The other thing you can do is you can put a little bit into the chicken's food um, as a worm as well. We started off doing that but I think because there's so much on the ground we don't really need to do it because as they're eating and pecking they get a bit of diatomaceous earth so it works out okay but if you had say a worm problem maybe you would want to add the diatomaceous earth to their food.
The other thing that the diatomaceous earth does is when the chickens poo on the ground, it coats it and makes it really, really easy to rake up. So not too much, just a really light coating. Little sprinkle everywhere. So it looks a little bit messy at the moment, but the chickens will turn that in real quick. So now Tim is gonna go and put some into the Bantam's cage. Are you guys checking out the grit? Pretty fancy, hey? Pretty fancy grit. I've never heard it said anywhere, but I really feel like the diatomaceous earth helps with the smell as well. Um, like it just seems to absorb smells. So may or may not be true, but that's my experience. So you can see here, we still have most of that bag uh, left. So we will put that up into some of the big white buckets like we have the food and we will put that up on the deck and every couple of months we'll come down and just put a couple of handfuls of diatomaceous earth around. We're also going to put some in the little dust bathing holes that they've made outside. Um, it doesn't matter that it's outside and it's raining or whatever because the diatomaceous earth will get wet when the ground gets wet and then dry when the ground dries. So it's still exactly the same. And I guarantee you the chickens will be dust bathing in that any minute. So you can see over here this guinea fowl. So that's actually a wild guinea fowl and we have a few of them on the property. That's why they're a bit more skittish than the other chickens. But because they are wild, they could have um, more parasites than our chickens. Maybe not, but they could have. So that's why we're also making sure that we've got enough diatomaceous earth around so that if they do have anything gross, um, it'll sort them out and they can hang out with our chickens and everyone can be happy and healthy. There's that wild guinea. So he is half, actually she is half lavender and half standard guinea fowl. So she's just a little bit different colour to the normal ones. But when they're wild, they all just breed together. They don't care about what their colour is meant to be. Whoa. See ya. So the wild guineas don't sleep in the coop at night. They actually jump up into the trees, um, which is really good because if they see any snakes or anything like that when they're sitting in the trees, they will go off. And I think they actually scare them away. So next, Tim is going to do the water. So these are just the cheap buckets from the hardware shop. And any old water we tip onto our salad bars or our coconut palms, especially in the dry season. In the wet season, don't worry about it. So the water buckets do get very dirty. They get cane toads in them and they get mosquito larvae in them. So it is really important to clean them out quite often. Um, we would usually do it every couple of days. When we first had the chickens, I was um, overexcited and I did it every day, but just every few days is fine. So that's underneath the water bucket there's a heap of worms so we'll leave them there for the chickens to eat you drinking the chickens water in the main coop here we've got the two big buckets of water and we also have this one here which is like a dinochook one um, for overnight and that needs to be filled up and cleaned up as well so that way, even if there are pecking order issues, so if the guinea fowl or some of the um, um, tougher chickens are stopping some of the uh, less or lower chickens in the hierarchy from getting to the water, there's water scattered throughout the place, so they've all got easy access to the water. So you can see this salad bar is uh, sweet potato leaves, and you can see how they chew the outside of them as they come through. And they can also fit their head through the bigger squares um, to get into them and then we've got some papaya growing in here as well and Tim just emptied their water bucket onto here and we've got some tomatoes growing in here they really like cherry tomatoes how come all the dogs are drinking all the chicken water hey Sheila 
what's the deal? So this sort of clean is the sort of clean that we would do every few months. Um, we don't do this, you know, daily or weekly or anything like that. On a daily basis, all we do is um, clean the mats every day or two or three. Um, we check that there is some straw in their nesting boxes because if there's not, they tend to break the eggs and we rake the bottom of the coop. So that's all that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then this sort of clean we do every few months. And then say once a year, um, we might do a really big clean where we wash everything. You could use detergent if you wanted at this point, but we just find that just a good scrub with some water is fine. The other thing that you have to watch when you've got these waterers in the chicken coop is that snakes don't get underneath this area um, or behind them. So you've really got to keep an eye out. We have had a snake hide in there. You can see that this is just an old sawhorse that I got from the op shop that we use as a roost so that the bantams can get off the wet ground if they need to and they just like getting up high and being the man. And don't put your lid on too tight. So if you put the lid on too tight, it creates like a suction so that the water doesn't come out into the little drinking cups. And if the water container is too heavy for you to carry in there, just bring your hose in there and fill it up inside the coop. So all the mats are nice and dry now. So Tim is going to take them into the coop. so much better as well yeah so much better it's not only us that like the chicken coop when it's nice and clean the chickens love it as well they're so much happier so we have to put the rubber mats on top of the nesting because every now and then some of the chickens will jump up there at night if they've had some pecking order issues and they might want to get away from the shelves So you can see this shelf here has only got a little gap. That is not design, that is just laziness. We haven't had a chance to move it yet. So we'll move that down to a lower shelf, um, especially once their chicks hatch and are old enough to jump up onto the shelf. So we have got more room yet. But the key to that is to go vertical. So if you've got a small coop, you can fit quite a few chickens in it as long as you go vertical and make the most of the height space. So when we do a big yearly clean, we'll clean out these nesting boxes as well. Are you so soft, hey? You got nice feathers, hey? Look at your comb, hey? Look at your comb. So we're nearly finished. We've done the diatomaceous earth. We've done the grit. We've hosed off the shelves. We've cleaned out the water containers. Um, we've raked up the bottom and got out as much chicken poo as we possibly can. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to refresh the nesting boxes now that we've taken the eggs out. And what we're going to use is lemongrass and I'll show you. So here is a wheelbarrow with a whole heap of chopped up lemongrass. And we've just chopped this and we've just gotten this from out of the veggie garden. And when lemongrass dries, it does lose a little bit of its fragrance, but it still has some. And it just makes the nesting boxes smell so lovely. So I'm going to put this lemongrass into the nesting boxes. And then I will take you to the lemongrass and I'll show you how easy it is to harvest the dried lemongrass from the bottom of the plant. So we will go into the veggie garden and head up the back towards the lemongrass. Can't walk past a papaya tree without admiring those papaya. Oh look, there's some random tomatoes coming up. And then up here, look at this tongue and spinach or a beaker. There is so much of it, it's crazy. But up the back here, this is the lemongrass that has gone to seed, which is fine. But if you have a look in here, 
You don't even have to cut the lemongrass to be able to pull out a heap, which you can then put into the nesting boxes. So you're doing two things at once. Look at that. That's enough for three or four nesting boxes and it smells beautiful. So let's take this back over to the chicken coop and then we just chop it up. And that is a beautiful, free, fragrant nesting box material. So there's our lemongrass. And then Tim will just grab a few handfuls of that. Beautiful, fragrant, free nesting material. And without scaring the chickens that are laying really carefully, we just pop that into the nesting box. And because the uh, lemongrass is a little bit tougher than normal straw that you would buy from the um, pet supply places or the farm supply places, it lasts a lot longer and it smells so beautiful. Here's the taste test. Moringa, which one do you prefer? Lemongrass or hay? Lemongrass, yay! Beautiful. And the other thing that you can use besides lemongrass is guinea grass. Um, and I'm not saying, the nesting bedding that you buy from the farm supply place is very cheap. It's only like $6 for a bag of it. Um, but there's something nice about being able to supply everything yourself. Um, so every time we find something that we can use, we are very happy. So now all we have to do is to get rid of the empty grit bags, the gloves, the buckets, the diatomaceous earth, take it all up to the veranda and we are done. And we need to put the chicken poo into the liquid compost. Hello Pepper. Hello Pepper. So that is our beautiful clean chicken coop. And it smells completely fresh and lovely of lemongrass and all the chickens will be very happy to lay their eggs in here. And we will grab these eggs and we'll take them inside. So just before we finish, we'll show you what we do with all of this chicken poo that we've harvested. Look at this pathetic little bunch of bananas. So these bananas don't get enough water, we know that. So they've got this tiny little banana flower and four bananas. So these are our IBC containers filled with liquid compost or compost tea. There's a heap of firewood. And the reason it's not stacked neatly is the dogs knocked it down because there was something in it. And Tim will just tip the chicken poo. And that literally becomes liquid gold when you are growing vegetables and fruit trees. So that's it. That's how we do a big clean of the chicken coop. If you feel like it, and only if you feel like it, like and subscribe. But most importantly, stay, stay calm, calm in the farm. farm.